Hey buddy, you better rewind that. What's going on, Rewind Gang? We are back with another reaction video for you guys. This time it's for so Mr. Bowling. So Mr. Bowling. Mr. Bowling. Mr. Bowling. We love Mr. Bowling on this channel. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I like that. Brand new story. Uh, it's called The Disturbing Story of the Melting Man. So that sounds like really interesting. Oh, but wait, wait, before we get into any of that, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to be uh, notified on future episodes and uh, all the other stuff we got coming up on the channel. Um, yeah, I, I, I can't say anything further about Mr. Bowling. We, we all say the same thing. He's, he's the GOAT. And he's he's actually becoming like a pretty much like a cult following, a good one. And um, yeah. I'm excited. You ready to go? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely, definitely ready. All right, let's uh, get into some strange, dark, and mysterious. Mm -hmm. Let's right. do this. Let's go. One night in 1946, a Brazilian farmer was walking along this dirt path when suddenly he started feeling like he was being watched. And so he looked to his right and to his left into the trees of the rainforest on either side of him, but he couldn't see any animals or people. There was no movement. It was eerily quiet and dark. And so the farmer told himself that he was okay, just keep going, get home. And so as he's walking, he begins speeding up faster and faster because the anxiety is growing inside of him because he can't shake this feeling that he's being watched. And so finally, when he's close enough to his village, he just starts running, fearing that whatever or whoever is watching him is going to jump out and grab him. And so he speeds to his house. He literally dives through an open window into his house. He shuts the window. He makes sure all the doors are locked. That sounds like something he or I would do. If yeah, if if I'm if need be yeah yeah like if I I'm out bro yeah if if I deemed it necessary I wouldn't if 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 I did that something messed me up like yeah. something like really is like like jarring me to the point where I have to maneuver whatever is behind me oh yeah we out and he's standing there in his house but you would maneuver and set traps it's pitch black and he's thinking okay I'm safe but suddenly he realizes not only has this feeling not gone away, he still feels like he's being watched, but whoever or whatever is watching him, he knows without looking that they're right outside of his house, outside the window to his left. And when he turned to look, he was right. What happened next would prompt a full-scale military investigation into a subject that can only be classified as paranormal. But before we get into that story, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious delivery story format, and you've come to the right place because that's all we do, and we upload once a week. So if that's of interest to you, please figure out which book the like button is reading currently, and when they're about halfway done with it, spoil the ending. Also, please subscribe to our channel <laughs> and turn on all people. notifications <laughs> so you don't miss any- That's a lot of people I know. Yeah. Our weekly uploads. Okay, let's get into today's story. On March 4th, 1946, nearly every resident of a rural Brazilian town called Arasariguama packed up a few days worth of food and drink and headed south to the nearest big city to celebrate the Festival of Carnival. This festival is an opportunity for folks to cut loose and eat good food. <laughs> you see, that's what's Carnival back then. Yeah. Boy, that's it's so bad. They, they dress all proper. This is, this is a wild west out with yeah man. those are like they're having fun though no 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 I, I, yeah I, they always have fun they always have fun but it's just so different seeing like you know suits at that time yeah, yeah, you know no no but, I mean that, that 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 was common and honestly I would like that style kind of kind of be to be back but you know hey man it's nothing to like to nah, rock a, hey, uh, wear a, a suit whatever like, you want like that that one was pretty dope <laughs> yeah before most of them go into a religious fasting period. One resident who opted not to join the fun at this festival was a 44-year-old man named Joao Prestige Filu. Joao was a farmer, he had five kids, he was a very quiet guy, he and he did not enjoy <laughs> things like the festival for Carnival. The crowds and the noise made him anxious, and he really hated dancing, which there was a lot of at these festivals. Instead, Joao would rather spend his spare time out in nature. And so, when Joao's friends and family and everybody else disappeared to head off to this festival, Joao did just that. 
He and his best friend packed up Joao's horse and cart, and they traveled across the dirt roads through the woods to the nearby Tiete River, where they spent the day fishing for catfish. And as Joao stood on the rocks, casting out his line, he listened to the birds sing and the parrots swooping by. It was beautiful and sunny out. I mean, this was a perfect day for Joao. As <laughs> every time I see the uh, what was it, like parakeets, right? Or mm, yeah, yeah. I, every time I see them, they were just my of uh, Fruit Loops. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't say. Well, <laughs> well, I, I, um, that, and you know, when I when I be out in Puerto Rico, I see them a lot. Oh yeah. Um, not every house, obviously, but like you know, here for the most part, you see them. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And um, it, it's it's pretty cool. It, it, I can't wait to go to Puerto Rico. But anyway, um, I wouldn't yeah. mind only one. Wouldn't mind right? one or two or three or four. No, that's too many. No, nah. chill. <laughs> that drew near, though, both Joao and his best friend knew that while the rainforest they were in was beautiful during the day, at night it could become quite hazardous with the animals that come out at night, and so they knew they needed to leave. And so they packed up all the fish they caught back into Joao's cart, and then the two of them hopped onto the cart and began making the journey back towards the town of Arasari Blanc. When the pair got to a split in the road, Joao's best friend hopped off the cart and walked on foot down one path because his house was actually just outside of the town and Joao, still in his cart with his horse, said bye to his friend and went the other direction. Now by this point, the sun had completely set and so it was totally dark out as Joao is going down this dirt road in the final stretch towards his town. At this time in 1946, Arasari Guama was a beautiful place but by no means a modern place. They had no running water, no electricity, there was no sewage, no paved roads, no access to main roads, and nobody had a telephone. It was basically like this little patch of civilization with about a hundred people living there. There was a church in the middle of the town and a couple of small huts that kind of sat around it. And Joao and his family lived in one of those huts. Joao usually loved walking along or traveling along this particular stretch of dirt road, especially at night, like he was doing right now. He really enjoyed looking up at the stars and listening to the animals off in the forest that he couldn't see. But this night, Joao just had a bad feeling as he was making this final approach towards his town. Now remember, there's almost no one in the town. They're all at this festival, so it's kind of like a ghost town in the middle of a forest. But Joao, as he's going down this dirt road and he can see the church up ahead, he's a couple hundred feet away, he began getting this very unnerving sense that he was being watched. And so Joao, as he's in his cart, began looking into the trees and all around him, wondering if maybe an animal or a person was nearby, but there was no one. Finally, Joao actually reached the church, and he could see his little house, and he could also see that his wife, who was at the festival, had opened up one of the windows just slightly so he could open it up the rest of the way and crawl into the house when he was back from fishing, because she had locked the doors when she left. And so by this point, Joao was trying to be very calm and collected, despite the stress of feeling like he's being watched. But when he saw that window and he saw how close he was to his house, he basically just had the horse sprint the rest of the way. And that's the thing, like, when you know you're being watched, like, there's, there's nothing stopping you from, like, just mm -hmm. looking back hundreds of times to make sure that there's something or mm -hmm. someone not, like, following you. Especially, like, you know, to 19, 19, 1940s, you know, pretty much they're in the, wilder, the wilderness. In the wilderness, there's, there's no so, tech, there's no, you know, the, the mm -hmm. cell phones and, and stuff like that. Like, his senses must have been crazy good, too, because, like... Yeah, but that's the thing, that it's it sense, you mm -hmm. know? Don't think, yeah. feel kind of thing. Mm -hmm. like, uh, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? And around that time, I'm a little bit jealous, because around that time, like, it's a little bit of both. Like, it's modern, but you still, you're within nature, yeah. you're still learning nature, you know? So his feelings was, like, correct. Like... I mean, an animal stalking is just as worse as whatever could be just as worse, you and know, but obviously... I, I think the, 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 is, you the, know, the unknown is, is more fearing than anything. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, that's, yeah. that's more the... Oh, shit. You can't feel, you feel, so feel better, like, yeah. damn, maybe it's an animal. It, it, I, even, like, yeah. it, it's, it's, a, it's a possibility, but at least it's something to think about. Like, you don't think about, like, what could. No, sure, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh, let's continue. Yeah.
to his home. He just wanted to get off the streets. And so finally, Joao, he reaches his house, he crawls in through the window, he shuts it behind him, and immediately, Joao expected to feel totally relieved that he was now behind locked and closed doors and windows. He was safe. But despite being inside of his home, he still had the sense that there was someone or something around him that was watching him. Joao, like many other residents of this village, was fairly superstitious. There was an old abandoned mine that was near the town, and Joao and his peers had grown up hearing stories about some monster that lived in the mine that would come out at night and roam the forest. Oh, no, and remember. older people in this village would talk about this ancient serpent called Boitata that would come out at night and it would appear in a burst of fire. And so Joao, he's thinking about the mine and these demons and ghosts that roam in the forest, and he's all alone because everyone's at this festival and he doesn't feel safe inside of his house. No one made movies about these creatures? These yeah. are very interesting. Yeah. So he's really starting to panic. And it's at this moment that he suddenly feels this sense that whatever or whoever has been watching him is right out his window to his left. And so Joao, as he's turning to look out the window, he's anticipating seeing a person out there or maybe a jaguar or some other animal that's followed him from the rainforest. But... When Joao turns and looks out the window into the dark night, what he sees right outside of his property was so terrifying that for a second Joao couldn't even breathe. And he just stood there staring at this thing, and then he tried to put his hands up to protect himself, but it was already too late. If you've made it this far into today's story, then I think it's safe to assume that you enjoy my style of storytelling, which boils down to true, strange, dark, and mysterious tales with a big plot twist or reveal at the end. And if I'm right in thinking that, yes, then I are. have a surprise for you. In addition to the hundreds of stories you can listen to right here on this YouTube channel, you can also find over 100 other stories on our podcast, many of which are not on YouTube. They are exclusive to the podcast. The podcast is called the Mr. Ballin Podcast, and on Mondays we put out those brand new exclusive podcast stories, and on Thursdays we... That being said... We love his podcast. They're great. Check them out. Yes. All right, let's continue with the story. And as he screamed all this nonsense, minutes later, Joao would come stumbling out of his front door, out into the dark night. He's got a big blanket wrapped around him, and he was just screaming incoherently. And as he screamed all this nonsense, he began running in this kind of zigzag pattern with no clear destination in mind. It was just like this mindless running all through the village. And as he's running, he's got no shoes on, and he's stepping on sharp rocks and glass and trash. He's cutting his feet up horribly, but he doesn't seem to even notice. And so as he's doing this, he's causing this huge scene, but everybody's gone. It's a ghost town. It's just him in this abandoned village in the middle of a rainforest in Brazil. But eventually, Joao kind of calmed himself down and ran to his sister's house, Marie, because he noticed there was a lamp on inside of her house, and he was hoping that maybe she too had stayed back from the festival. And it would turn out Marie had not gone to the festival. She too did not really like big gatherings like that, and so she was home. And so Marie was in her kitchen when she began hearing outside this horrible screaming sound, almost guttural sounds coming from someone or some animal out there. And then before she could even figure out what it was, she heard this loud thud against her door. Marie was terrified and she ran to her front window to look out and see what it was that had just collided with her door. And what she saw made no sense. It was her brother, Joao, but he was wrapped in that big blanket and his feet were all bloody and he was screaming at the top of his lungs, but he wasn't saying anything. He was just kind of babbling. And so Marie was about to run over and open the door for her brother. But right before she did, as she's looking out the window, Joao turned and looked at her. And when he did, she screamed because his eyes looked so alien. They were wide and totally unfocused. And she thought, that can't be my brother. What's wrong with him? 
but she would go over and open the door because after all, it is her brother. And so she opens the door, Joel kind of falls into the room and began writhing around on the ground, continuing the scream he was emitting that didn't even seem human. And the whole time, Marie is trying to ask him, what's wrong, what's going on here? She's scanning him, and besides the cuts all over his feet, he didn't appear to have other injuries. And so eventually, Marie just knelt down and she was about to grab Joel and try to kind of stop him from moving around to just look at him and try to have a conversation with him. But before she grabbed him, Joel rolled over and his lips opened up, exposing his teeth. And he kind of grimaced at her with those wild, unfocused eyes. And again, Marie just kind of backed up in horror. Who is this? What's happened to my brother? And as Marie stood up to get away from Joel, Joel still with that sickening grin with his teeth exposed, had this kind of low hiss come out of his mouth. And so Marie, thinking he was trying to talk, she leaned in and through this hiss, she heard him repeating, it burns, it burns. And so Marie, thinking her brother must have been burned, instinctively began removing the blanket and pulling his clothes off to find the source of this burn on her brother. But besides the cuts all over his feet, as she's looking at his body, his skin looked totally normal. He looked completely unhurt. And so Marie turned up to look at Joao's face again to ask him more questions in hopes maybe he could tell her something. And it was at that moment she noticed that even though he didn't seem to have any other injuries, his complexion on his face was now starting to change. Now, Joao's cheeks had turned this kind of dark purple and almost looked like they were starting to swell. And so at this point, Marie knew, okay, I can't handle this. I don't know what's going on here. And so she would stand up and just kind of back away from Joao, who's still got that grimace with his teeth exposed and his purple cheeks. He's staring up at Marie. And Marie, she finally backs out and she goes out the front door and she begins running to the other side of town. Marie knew that there were two other men who had stayed home from this festival. It was the town sheriff and the town doctor, whose name was Arasi Gumiji. And those two men lived close together on the other side of town. And when Marie arrived in front of their homes and began pounding on their doors and yelling for help, the two men quickly came outside, at which point Marie tried to explain what was happening to her brother, but she didn't really have the words. And so she just said, he needs your help. And so the two men just went with Marie and they ran Back across, yeah, it, it's something like that. You, you're not gonna try to explain. He's like, just, just please come with me, come with me. Like you can't, you know. You can't so especially if, if, if it's something like that seems kind of paranormal, you're gonna be like, yo, just, just come. You have to see it. I'm, and, I'm not gonna, you know. Oh my god. But what's 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 this? What's disturbing me? Uh, yeah, it's kind of is is it's, it's, it's not even just like you know paranormal. It have not gotten there yet. It's just something's happening. That's that's the thing. Like something yeah. that, that moment is just happening, and she just wants to resolve. She needs answers. Yeah. You know what I mean? She needs to resolve this. Needs answers. He needs to be good. <sighs> oh, Story's man. pretty good, man. <laughs> Jesus. Um, to Marie's house, where Joel was still on the ground, writhing in pain, when they went inside. Marie had only been gone for a couple of minutes, but by now, it wasn't just Joao's cheeks that had turned that purplish color. His chest and arms were okay. also turning okay, purple. So At this point, the sheriff leaned over Joao and began asking him some questions, and Joao, he was obviously in horrible pain from something, but by this point, he had calmed down enough to where he was speaking a little bit more, but what he was saying made no sense. He told the sheriff that he had been followed home and then he got burned. And when the sheriff asked him, who burned you? All Joao could say was, no one is to blame. At this point, the sheriff left Marie's house and jogged over no to Joao's to house to look for some sign of how he got burned. But when he got there, the house was completely unburned. Everything was exactly as it should have been. There was no scorch marks. There was not even a lit candle anywhere. So there was no clues as to what happened to Joao. By the time the sheriff got back to Marie's, it had been about 45 minutes from when Joao first got hurt. And now, whatever was happening to his body that was turning him purple appeared to be getting much worse. Joao's skin all over his face and his chest and his arms was now not only a very dark purple but his skin was starting to blister and pop and that sounds like poison but how did he get poison well he said burning maybe he was getting a burning sensation from somewhere maybe he uh, accidentally had a, I don't know, a bug went in his mouth or something like that and 
He ingested something or something. something yeah, or something, something got victim. ingested in him. Yeah. In him. And he's probably the only feeling on the inside. That's why he doesn't have any. Like, he's probably ch- you know changing color. It's uh, amazing. It's amazing what like like certain chemicals and concoctions could do. In animals, like, uh, oh my god! You know, in yeah. animals and, and in human making. In humans, yeah. Like, like this is crazy. Yo. All right, let's find out. God. There was one area on his arm that had bubbled up so much that when it burst, you could actually see the bone in his <sighs> arm. It was almost like Joao had been boiled in water, like the way you would boil meat on a bone until the meat was tender enough that it fell off the bone. God. It was like that was happening to Joao. Yo, I used to work in a kitchen, man. So like, if like a piece of uh, piece or a little thing of grease pops on your, your skin, you get that little bubble and you pop that. That's small. That's on a small scale. But whatever this was was so big that you could see the bone inside this. That's crazy. That means the that's, it, it 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 destroyed that whole meat. Yeah, that was that, there. The yeah, all muscle, everything. all that. All that shit just piled up and poof, just you can see the bone. Oh my god, oh man! All right, let's let's continue. So let's as Joao's flesh just sort of began cooking off of him, the town doctor Arasi said we have to get him to a hospital right now. But because the roads were not paved and it was dangerous traveling at night, they knew they couldn't get him to the big city hospital. They would have to take him to a local hospital. And so the sheriff, who had a truck, said, let's just put him in the truck and I will drive him there. And so Arasi, the sheriff, and Marie, they got a new sheet. They wrapped up Joao inside of it and they brought him outside. They put him in the sheriff's truck and they began driving towards the hospital. Arasi stayed in the back with Joao as they made this drive. And every time the truck went over a bump, Joao would let out a cry of pain and Arasi would look over and he would literally see these bumps were causing his skin to kind of fall off of his body. When they finally arrived at the local hospital, the staff there pulled Joao inside, they put him in a private room, they put him on a bed, and they had no idea how to treat him. It was like his injuries looked nothing like they had ever seen. They didn't even know where to begin, and they kind of assumed that Joao would not survive whatever was happening to him. And so the first thing they did is just pumped him full of painkillers. And while these painkillers didn't actually do anything to stop basically Joao's body from decomposing while he was still alive, they did at least allow Joao to stop feeling this horrible pain of his flesh falling off of him. And so Joao finally just kind of sunk back in his bed and the sight of him must have just been horrific. He literally had huge chunks of his flesh just missing. I mean, literally parts of his skeleton were exposed to the naked eye. After the doctors had gotten Joao as stable as they could get him, Arasi, the local town doctor, sat down next to Joao and just began asking him questions. And for the first time, Joao was able to talk somewhat normally because he was on such a high dose of painkillers. And so Arasi began asking Joao to go over everything that happened from the time he left fishing for catfish until he arrived at his house and got burned. This is roughly what Joao told Arasi. He said on his walk home from fishing, he started getting that feeling that he was being watched. And it got more and more intense as he got into town until finally he basically sprinted the rest of the way to his house, practically dove through that open window, shut it behind him, and expected to feel relief being in his own home again. But he didn't. The feeling only intensified that he was being watched. And at some point, he got that sense that whoever or whatever was watching him was to his left, out the window, out into his yard. And when Joao turned to look, what he saw standing outside was this dark figure kind of hovering over the ground, and it was staring right at Joao. And before Joao could even put his hands up to protect himself from whatever or whoever this was, this figure shot this bright ray of light directly into Joao's home through that window, which hit Joao in the chest and the face. And immediately Joao was blinded and confused by this light, and then it really started to burn. He believed he was on fire, which is why he grabbed that blanket and wrapped it around himself. He was trying to put out a non-existent fire, and that's when he stumbled outside and kind of zigged and zagged, kind of half trying to put this fire out until he arrived at Marie's house. But when he got there, that sensation of feeling like he was on fire didn't go away. It just got worse and worse and worse, and then his skin began falling off. When Arasi asked Joao, you know, who do you think did this to you? Who do you think that figure was? And Joao, with bulging eyes, would sit forward and say to Arasi, it wasn't of this world. 
and as Joao said this, a chunk from his cheek fell off, exposing his jaw and teeth. And as this happened, Joao asked one of the nurses for a water. And so Arasi is sitting there having heard the story as Joao, who's all hopped up on painkillers, is grabbing this water and drinking. And Arasi is watching the water dribble out of the hole no. now on the side of Joao's face. About four hours later, Joao would pass away from his injuries. There has never been any official explanation for what actually happened to Joao. The doctors just wrote cardiac arrest and generalized burns on his death certificate because they really had no idea what else to call this. Joao's family believed the Boitata, the ancient serpent that lived in the forest and appeared at night in a ball of fire, was responsible for what happened to Joao. Other people in town thought maybe it was the monsters or demons from the old abandoned mine that had come out and attacked Joao. Outside of Joao's town, people have theorized that Joao must have been subjected to some really high dose of radiation. And so this theory has led people to believe that, you know, perhaps Joao was the victim of a secret weapon that the government was testing. But to create such a concentrated beam of radiation that only affects Joao would be way more technologically advanced than anything that was available at the time in the world. Not to mention, why would any government randomly target a Brazilian farmer with this weapon? But Joao would not be the only person in Brazil to die from mysterious rays of light. In the 1970s, so 30 years after Joao's death, several people in a city in northern Brazil reported seeing bright lights coming down from the sky, and then they too began turning purple and their skin began falling off and they would die. And so because of this high number of very strange deaths that looked just like Joao's, a new theory has taken root over the years to explain what happened to Joao and these people. And that is, they were attacked by a UFO. That Joao, when he looked out the window and saw that dark figure hovering over the ground, that was a UFO, and the light he saw was a weapon. The UFO was firing a ray of radiation that struck him and killed him like it struck and killed the others in Brazil. The military actually looked into this theory in 1977 and 1978. It was called Operation Saucer, like Flying Saucer. However, officially, they came out out and said they found no evidence that UFOs were in any way involved in what happened to Joao or these other people. However, many people are skeptical that we're really getting the truth. That shit is crazy. So, that's gonna do it. If you got something what? out of today's episode... That shit is crazy, cousin. Wow. Yo. And these... And these are... Yo. Wow. Rewind gang, rewind gang. What do you guys think it was? I'm I'm going UFO because I've heard like similar stories, you know, you know, cr cruising through the internet and TV shows, I'm, I'm Science sad. Channel, History Channel, all like all that, Ancient Aliens. There's similar stories like 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 that of people getting hit with like a ray of light and like their skin falling off and all that shit. That's nuts, bro. I'm over here as like a like. The animal attack, like a snake bit him or something like that, and you know, skin stuff all that's also happened. But Son. the way this sounds, that sounds I'm leaning more towards UFO or something of that nature. Something radioactive. I, I can't even, I can't even really. What can I? What do you think it was, brother? There's. It can't explain the unexplainable. You know, like all the yeah, theories. Yeah. All the theories, no, there, there is an explanation for it. It's just, it's one of those things that it happened and we won't know until it's known. And that's the sad, that's the sad truth. My, my theory, which, which I haven't, like, Well, I hope we don't have to get somebody to, to have their skin fall off or get hit with a ray of, of uh, radioactive shit to, Sounds like a trigger happy. For <laughs> us to get the evidence that we need. To find out who, whatever it is that that did that, you okay. know. But maybe he's like a psychopathic uh, time traveler. Like but guys, you, you guys drop it in the comments below. What, what do you guys think it was that that uh, that took this this poor man's life? Please. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, just drop it in the comments below. Uh, chat with us. Let us know. Uh, yeah, let us know what you guys think of the, of the episode. This is a really great story. Uh, yeah, guys, if you're new to the channel, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe uh, to be notified of future episodes.
with a real one, guys. You guys, take care. Have a good one. Peace. See ya. Hey, buddy, you better wind up.